Good afternoon everyone again and welcome to another Up The Borough video chat and today I'm glad to say I'm joined by Matt Hill. Good afternoon Matt. Good afternoon Matt. Uh, first question comes from Mark Alcock. What made you join Stafford Rangers and are you enjoying your time at the club? Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying, my uh, I'm enjoying my time at the club. Um, considering it's Valentine's Day, uh, the best I suppose I can I can put as the terminology is uh, is the management meets uh, the way he got his uh, his wife. Um, he constantly pestered her twenty asked her twenty times, thirty times. Would you go out with me? Would you go out with me? And uh, finally, she said yes. And obviously, she and him has never looked back. Um, and it's pretty much the same for me. Meeks constantly pestered me at the start of the season. Uh, asked if I'd like to come down to Stafford. Uh, I did come down for one training session, but. Um, you know, I, I wanted to play at the highest level uh, I can possible, and that was still in uh, Conference North, uh, and that was for Ashford, um, uh, Ashton Town, so, uh, or oh, Ashton United. Ashton United, Ashton United, even, United yeah. should I say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was, you know, an opportunity I, I couldn't turn down. But um, when Meeks took the job, uh, he was quite consistent in terms of uh, asking me, would I like to come down? And obviously, he's a, he's a great friend of mine, and uh, I wanted to help him, and I wanted to play as well, so yeah. that's the reason why coming down. So he wore you down in the end then? He yeah. Down. Yes, yeah, and definitely worth it in the end. So it was good. Right, that's great to hear. I'm um, from Pete Roscoe. Uh, what is, have you ever heard about Stafford Rangers before you came here? You know, whether it be good, indifferent, you know, what was your perception of the club? I have to apologise. Very little of the club. Um, didn't know much. No, it's good Sorry. that you're being honest, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing, no. <laughs> Right, and from Jamie Howard and James Moran, again, there's several little questions here. So, first one is, who's the best manager you've ever played under? Meech uh, doesn't watch this, by the way. Yeah, no, I'd have to say uh, <laughs> Danny Wilson. Um, he took over at Bristol City uh, when I was a, obviously a young lad and, um, you know, really helped to progress my game. Um, gave me my first captaincy as well um, at Bristol City, so uh, that was a massive honour for myself. Um, he also took me at Sheffield United, uh, which again, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Sheffield United. But um, you know, I had huge respect for him, and you know, he'd be the manager uh, I really did enjoy playing for. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned Bristol City there. Obviously they've got the Dingles visiting there tomorrow. Both, yeah. uh, so I take it you'll be keeping an eye on that result. Will yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Always, always uh, watch out for mm. Bristol City. Um, you know, obviously it's my hometown club. Um, you know, they've done fantastically well this season, and uh, you know, there's, hopefully there's still more to come. Yeah, tough, tough one from tomorrow though, isn't it? Against Wolves, yes, it's yes, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so I think they're nine unbeaten, so they're going well at the moment. Yeah, well, I think both clubs. You know, Wolves are, are, are you know another team that I that I watch. Surprise um, for a few people this season, I think. Surprise, maybe not because of the way they play. Um, I think they've been fantastic. Um, you know, I've got a good friend, the captain there, Connor Cody, who I played with at Sheffield United. Um, so again, you know, he's done unbelievably well, and long may that continue. Yeah. And who's the best player you've said you've played alongside? Um, I've, I've got a couple. Well, Is there anybody that you really clicked with? And, uh, uh, well, Claude Davis at, at Preston North End, um, at centre half. Uh, he was you know, strong, quick. Um, you know, I was able to, to bomb one forward and know I had plenty of cover behind me. Um, in terms of going forward, Matt Jarvis at Wolves. Um, lightning quick and give him the ball. You, you can get overlapping because he's that quick. Yeah. Um, but you know he was a very very good player and um, you know a player that really kicked on in his career. And obviously on the other side of it, was there a player that you always used to think, oh no, I'm not up against him again, attacker from the opposition? Who uh, who was your worst nightmare coming onto the pitch? Worst nightmare. <laughs> um, you knew you never was going to have an easy day when he was there. Uh, I would probably say Campbell Rice, Jamal Campbell Rice. I think um, you know he was a very good player, very tricky. Um, a right-sided player that liked to come on, drift inside, drift in and out. Uh, I think he was a player that gave me the most problems in my time. Yeah. And from Darren Allport, uh, which team club have you enjoyed playing for the most and why? I would say Preston North End. Uh, it was my first move uh, from Bristol City to Preston. Um, so, again, it was, a, it was a massive deal for myself. Um, I had some, well, two and a half maybe three years you know of, of good football played really well um, close to getting promoted um, into the Premiership but uh, it wasn't to be but um, no I, I you know I thoroughly enjoyed myself I felt I was playing the best football I could possibly play at North End yeah 
And like you say, originally from down the Bristol way, how, did, how did you find it over the years moving, like say, moving from Bristol to Preston was obviously quite a leap. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was, um, yeah, like I said, it was a, it was a big move. Um, I had only had my well, my son James, who was two, maybe three. So for me and my partner, it was a, it was a big thing moving away from Bristol because it seemed a million miles away, uh, and it was just us. So um, we we haven't moved since, you know. Preston is home now. Uh, we've got two more kids, so three in total, and um, you know, Preston's home now. Yeah, and from Ben Alcock, right? Say with all the previous clubs and that you've had, how do you actually find it playing down in the non-league? Very competitive. Um, I think the football's good. Um, you know, I don't think it's too much different from League One and Two potentially. I think uh, yes, the players that are are fitter than the players in non-league but that's to be expected considering they train every day there's a lot more sort of strength and conditioning that goes on and you know you have to be an athlete these days to to reach the top level yeah and I know you just touched on a moment at Preston there but from Nick Barron's little lad Albert uh, what's the best trophy that you've ever won right so you came close to winning best uh... trophy yeah <laughs> um, so the trophies I have won was the LDV um, so that was that was uh, a great moment at Bristol City from a home club um, to be involved with Wolverhampton Wanderers to, to win the championship. Uh, so that's obviously got to be be up there, I suppose, as the, the best feeling. Um, but personally, I won uh, two player of the years. So one for Bristol City, one for Preston. And I think, um, you know, for that, on a personal front, it was massive for me. I take it they've got pride of place at home, have they? Yes, they have indeed. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're a little trophy cabinet there. Yes, uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> And from Mark Bennett, what's the best derby game that you've played in? You must have played a few derbies over the time. Yeah, I still have to go with uh, Bristol City, Bristol Rovers. Yeah. Um, because, like you say, it's my hometown. It's, Friendly it's, affair. It's, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it was just massive for the for the town. And Bristol is a, is a huge place. So, um, you know, it was, it was a big rivalry. And I was glad to say one more than we lost. Yeah. Well, hopefully you've got quite a few more years to go yet. But from Sean Reynolds... Do you want to go into coaching and management after your playing career is over? Is this something you thought about? Or? Yeah, yes. Um, I had actually had a brief spell with, with Alex um, up at Bradford. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I have a, a coaching academy up in Preston as well. And uh, I'm also coaching at Blackpool uh, Academy under 14. So, yeah, that's my progression within within coaching. And uh, we'll see where it takes me. Yep, so I hope it uh, takes uh, your badges soon then. I have my B licence, yeah. You've still got your B licence at the moment, yeah. 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 Um, Plans for the A licence? Well, this is it. It just depends on yeah. if I want to, you know, really take it seriously in terms of the actual, you know, coaching at a football club of sorts. So, um, we'll see. Yep. And from Dennis Eccleston, uh, what do you reckon with regards to any training two nights a week for non-league, obviously, to what you compare to? Do you think it's enough or...? Uh, well, obviously it's never enough, yeah. but um, you know we've got to be realistic. You know, people work, um, people have to travel as well. So uh, coming down from Preston, it it'd be too much to you know to try and do it four times a week. It's just not possible. Um, so unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, if we were to go higher up in the league, then yeah, full time would be the ideal thing, but not the case. Yeah, because I know one of the uh, the problems we have around the Stafford area at the moment is. There's more and more teams appearing, but there seems to be less and less pitches. So trying to actually gain the training facilities as well is a major problem at the yeah. moment. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And from Alan G, with you playing for so many years, I'm sure it doesn't mean that many just, years. Just a couple. Yeah. <laughs> what big difference have you noticed between now and when you set out regarding things like players' discipline and habits? And uh, I think obviously the game's changed in terms of the pace. Um, I think, like I said before, you've got to be an athlete now to, to play football. Uh, if you're not fit, you're no good. Um, I think in terms of the way the game's played, it's a lot faster. Um, I think the pitch is now, maybe not this pitch out there, unfortunately, but they are like bowling greens. So, you know, the quality and the style of football is, is a lot better. You know, it used to be the long ball game, as, as we used to call it. Uh, but that's only because of the, the standard of the pitches. You can't play a passing game on that. So I think everything's gone up a notch within that. Um, tackling, I suppose, is, is uh, the art of tackling has gone out of the game a little bit. I know there used to be a few tackles around the neck and, and head. But, uh, yeah, I think the, it annoys me a little bit watching the Premiership. I think there's too many soft yellows that, that go on in the you know in the Premiership. And I think that could be, you know, I think, I think that's killing the, the dying sort of... 50-50 yeah. how, how would Vinnie Jones get on now? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't last. He wouldn't last. So, yeah, I think that's the, the one thing that's died off. Yeah. 
And from Kevin Dixon, uh, having been around so many dressing rooms throughout your career, does the current prospects and run of indifferent results that we've had here make you feel like leaving the club to, for another team or is it just one of the things, no, we've just got to get on with it? And uh... Well, I've come into the side and uh, we only lost one game. So, yeah. uh, no, the atmosphere is fantastic. Um, considering where we are in the league, you wouldn't think that we were a team that's around the bottom. So uh, that's credit to the boys. I think that's credit to the coaching staff as well because, like you say, we come in, we're all lively, we're all bubbly. We're looking forward to today's game. And, um, you know, we believe that we'll be... We'll be safe and we'll be fine. Yeah, well, that's one thing I've certainly noticed, especially at uh, the training sessions and around the dressing room. The, the spirit in there seems to be really buoyant and uh, yeah, the results may not reflect it sometimes, but it, there does seem to be a togetherness in there. Yeah, I think that shows belief. I think, um, you know, we do believe that we can we can turn it around. Um, we obviously, we've added to the, the squad and hopefully, like you said, with, with my presence and things like that as well, can uh, can only help to uh, to stay up. Oh, you'll be in the spotlight today, then. <laughs> uh, do, from Jamie Howard, do you look back on your career and feel proud, or do you feel that you might have been able to do things a bit different? Yeah, I'm proud. Um, I think, uh, you know, to look back and say that you've played over 400 and odd games uh, professionally, not many players can, can actually say that. Um, still playing now, which is, which is, I think, a good achievement. I still love the game and still love playing it, so... Looking at it, I think I've done well. Um, my only regret um, was I had a chance or an opportunity to to leave on the last day of a transfer window, which uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm still a little bit bitter about that. That could have been different, and if that would have happened, then it may have changed my life. Yeah. And from Phil Bennett, uh, we hear of racism at very high levels of football. Uh, have you been affected by it, and does it happen at all in non-league? Have you ever seen it or come across it? Or? Um, only a couple of times, um, but you know, thankfully, it, it is being stomped out of the game. And um, you know, like you say, with TV and that, you know, with TV and you know everything being highlighted even more so, I don't think there's as much. As, well, it's hardly anything um, to what it used to be. And thankfully, like you say, it, it, it's it's being eradicated. But because of social media and things like that, any small incident now is is hyped up and blown up sometimes out of proportion which again it shouldn't happen anyway but um, I do believe it is getting better yeah it's like you say it does get blown out of proportion the recent ones at Chelsea and West Ham where it's just one or two individuals but the press blow it up and it makes it uh, sound a lot worse than what it is and yeah yeah. Yeah, thankfully it's uh, a thing of the past gone back to the 80s and Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it will stay there for good yes indeed and from Liz Sullivan uh, finally could you tell us something about yourself that might surprise us there you are. That's put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah that might <laughs> surprise you. Um, I don't know what would surprise you. Uh, you weren't called Matilda in a former life, was you? Or... <laughs> no, no. What would surprise no. you? Um, no, I'm quite a, a plain and boring chap, to be honest. So uh, yeah. I don't think I have anything really that. Uh, no, but three, good, three, but three kids is not a lot that can surprise us. No, 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 indeed, indeed. So yeah. no, nothing really. No. Yeah. Well, many thanks for that, Matt. I say it's been a pleasure to talk to you and good luck for this afternoon then. Thank you very much.